Hi, my name is Carla de Guzman. I'm a romance writer from the Philippines. And today I'm going to talk about my writing journey. A lot of my life really goes into my books. And I just thought, well, what's the point of a YouTube channel if you can't talk about your own writing journey? So um, I'm going to take you through my books one by one. Um, like what, what was going on when I wrote them, what stage I was in my life, things like that. And I hope it gives you some insight on on any writer's journey, on how the first book can be completely different from what's going on right now. And let's jump in. So my author journey started in 2013 when this is just a couple of months after I lost my very first job. And it was a very huge decision for me to, you know, sit down and tell myself that I want to write for a living. Um, which is not really, I mean, it's something I never thought I would do. I mean, I like writing fan fiction. I like reading fan fiction. I wrote Cities. Cities was my very first attempt at writing fiction. And I thought that I was the shiz. I thought I was amazing. I thought when I finished my book, holy crap, everyone's going to line up to buy this. Everyone's going to want to read this. I'm so good. I'm going to change the face of the Philippine publishing industry forever. I realized now that that was the funniest thing that I would ever have said. It was the stupidest thing I could ever have said because I said that without having read anything else. I said that without looking up what was out there and that was my biggest mistake, I think. So I started to pitch it to local publishers like a dummy and then I got no response. No response at all and it made me feel very lonely and sad and you know a little more pathetic than I already felt than when I started one of um, my old high school batchmates Alyssa Urbano she, I saw she was posting on Wattpad she was um, doing very well she's still very successful even until now so I sent her a message I asked her like how did you do it um, could you give me some advice things like that and she was very sweet she replied to me she told me that you know she's very into wattpad which may or may not be my thing but she recommended that i check out bronze age media what basically what they do is they help authors publish their um completed manuscripts and she explained to me over oh, this is going to be self-publishing um if you really just want to get your book out there this is how you can do it i got in touch with Angela Corsino, who we all know I'm still friends with now. And um, she she asked me for my manuscript. She, apparently she read it or she read some of it. And she said, yeah, we would love to help you publish this. So she got me in touch with Layla, who still edits my books until now. And then she said, okay, well, the next part of your publishing journey is you have to go to, to this place in Green Hills. And then you're going to meet Mina Villasguerra and she's going to teach you how to publish your book. And I remember being super nervous because I had no idea what that meant. Again, I was going into this not knowing anything really. So, so I was like, sure, sure, okay, let's do this. Just And then Ansel so said, oh, just bring your laptop. Bring your laptop, it has to have your manuscript in it. Um, she'd already at that point converted the manuscript to things I could upload to Kindle and stuff like that. And then I remember meeting Mina and she was very straightforward, like, okay, this is what you have to do. Um, you set this up. This is what that means. This is what this means. Very in-depth conversation. And then when we finished uploading the thing, she said, well, congratulations, you're a published author. I was like, what? That's it? Yeah, that was it. And like the next thing we did was we arranged a blog tour for Cities. Cities was out. She gave she recommended a printer and the printer said, Okay, how many copies do you want? I'm like, 50? Which is crazy because I don't print 50 books anymore. But then I, the next thing I knew, I had 50 copies of my own book. People could read it. I was talking about it on Facebook and suddenly like, whoa, I, w I was an author. I was... I was getting in touch with people who wanted to read my book and that was crazy. I, my entire city's experience is completely different from the way I experience books now. Mostly because it's cities isn't a romance. <laughs> I don't know. I think I, I still think that cities my very first pancake was a fluke. A very interesting fluke. So, um 
after cities, I, Mina invited me to join this Facebook group called Romance Class. And I had no idea what that was. Like, okay, sure, let's join this Facebook group. And it was a bunch of these people talking about books they like, talking to other authors, and I felt super out of place. <laughs> Again, I did not know anyone. And I'm, I'm a very shy person. If you didn't know this about me, I'm like super shy. And um, I remember the very first, li I've mentioned this before, but in the very first live reading where she invited authors from romance class to, to the study by Enderun, I actually brought my sister along because I was so nervous about other people. So after publishing Cities and joining romance class, I, I found myself really diving into the world of romance. And in rapid succession, I wrote two books. Um, two, I wrote and published two books, Marry Me, Charlotte V, and We Go Together. Marry Me, Charlotte V is basically a reality show in book form. And I finished this writing this in three weeks. We Go Together is a, um, is a much ado about nothing retelling. And I was really enjoying myself. I, I liked writing. I found myself like really enjoying the process of publishing books. At that point, we had our very first romance class had the very first April Fields Day. <laughs> um, you know when there are just some things that happen when you feel like your life kind of changed? <laughs> For me, April Fields Day was the very first time that I felt like I was in a community. It was the first time I felt like, wow, this is a lot of fun. I, I could do this over and over again with these people and I'd be fine. And at this point, I this is where I had kind of my revelation. Um, because... I watched the live readings and I've said this before and I think a lot of the authors of romance class say this too the live readings have been one of the greatest things that helped me be a better writer I think because I think our actors have this amazing ability of picking up exactly what would make the audience you know like excited would make them click and they know exactly how to build up the words that are already there so also in that event Agai Leonera was selling copies of Choco Chip Hips and I still like to say that Choco Chip Hips is one of my favorite books of all time because she made me cry twice and I never cry. I think this is the very first book I read with a fat character that didn't make me hate myself. Again, I've said this before that a guy's writing is amazing and pair it with this story. It just, it just made my heart sing in the best way possible. And at around the same time, I joined romance class. Then the romance class the official romance class class the very first email that i sent to mina for that class like the thing that i proposed is completely different from what i ended up writing because but because of choco chip hips because of what i'd already seen what i'd already what i'd already read i decided to write if the dress fits again this is the book that sort of changed everything for me uh, gave me a chance to create a character in Martha and in Max where I tried to simulate what it would feel like for someone to fall in love with someone like me um, yeah and it, it, it still means a lot to me even to this day and I'm super grateful at how it was received how people seem to like it I don't think I'll ever be able to write a book like this again right after that we just I just started getting into the whole thing of romance class so we had events we were coming up with events left and right we were selling books we were doing things we were meeting new live readers almost every day <laughs> and i thought okay okay what's next what do i do next i was reading a lot of books where the girl would be like a working class girl like having fun things like that and then she meets this guy oh he's hot he's cute oh suddenly he's the secret prince of some european european principality and i'm like oh you know, it gets tiring after a while. After you've seen The Prince and Me, The Prince and I, The Prince and Me, there's not really a lot. <laughs> there's not really a lot about it that excites me anymore. And I thought, well, what if, what if, what if she was a Filipino? And it wasn't until I came back from vacation in Batanes that I realized exactly what I had to do. So I came out with The Queen's Game. 
I still love this book so much. Princess Nina, she's kind of a badass and I like that about her. I don't remember how long it took me to write The Queen's Game but I feel like it was pretty fast. I felt very fueled, very inspired. So at this point, I had already set up my routine. I, you know, I did romance class events, we did live readings, um, I published books, we sold them. I feel more self-actualized as a writer. I didn't feel so alone anymore. See, it's so easy to write a book about Paris. There are a million books about Paris. And I thought, what could I possibly contribute to a world that already has Laura Floron books? And again, I was reading up on what was already there. And there were, I noticed there were a lot of stories where um, basically the plot would be a woman somewhere, either in the US or the UK, decides, well, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to move to Paris. But, you know, I can't, I didn't really relate to those books because I can't do that. That is physically, well, not physically, but almost totally impossible for someone like me. How can you have a character that lives in Paris but have only been there as a tourist? How can you talk about Paris in the context of not being so cliche? So I thought, I just embraced the cliche and I decided to write Chasing Mindy. Um, Mindy is a side character in If the Dress Fits. So technically, these, are, these two books are in the same universe. Chasing Mindy was a difficult book to write for me because I started writing Mindy and Javier as, a, as like 27, 28 years old, but no. These guys are 24 and 23 in the published version because they need to be children. They need to be childish to experience Paris a certain way. And I was able to write Paris in from a tourist's point of view and still make a story that worked for me, at least for me. And uh, I love this cover for multiple reasons. <laughs> and so this book was just very fun. Like, um, I enjoyed writing it, I enjoyed thinking about it, I enjoyed dreaming about this book. So I launched Chasing Mindy in April Feels Fest. At that point, I was already writing something else. <laughs> I do not know what got into me for this one, but I thought I wanted to write something super adult. Like, <laughs> I think I was just kind of, you know, I was kind of drained by writing such young characters. And in my head, 23 was already super young. I just wanted, okay, okay, I need super mature characters. I want them to be to act like adults, like more adult than me. And I wanted to have Shanghai somewhere in there. And it's going to be about makeup. So that's how I wrote How She Likes It. How She Likes It is my thickest book. The thickest book I've ever written. It's I clocked this in at about 62,000 words, something like that. And Adam and Isabel were the easiest characters to write for me. I I don't know why. Like, for me, I feel like out of all the books I've ever written, this one I wrote the fastest. This one for me was the easiest to come out with. Does that mean I'm a hoe? <laughs> I found it very easy to dive into Isabel being like this badass CEO. Like, okay, I'm not gonna take anyone's shiz. And I like that Adam was very strong and very dependable, much like the guy I modeled him after. Not this guy. <laughs> but yeah, I super enjoyed writing this one. And a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, this is super steamy, Carla. Like, what? I know, right? I did not expect my own words to be that steamy in this book, but... Please, family, don't read this one. <laughs> I actually asked my... I, I, when I announced this on Facebook, I actually said, Titas are not allowed to read it. They're not. They're really not. It's... So if you're interested in reading any of these books, um, please do feel free to follow me on Instagram or on Twitter at Carla K. De Guzman. Um, you can also find my books on Smashwords and Amazon. I try to post a video about writing or books or anything every Wednesday. So you can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're into that. Um, in the link, in the description box below, you will find links to live readings of my books where you will see exactly what I mean when I say that these live reading actors are amazing. And it, it'll give you like a sneak peek into the way I write. So I hope you enjoy. I hope you click through the links. They're really good. Um, so yeah, that's it. I will see you next time and bye.